If you haven't thought about it, maybe it just hasn't crossed your mind. If you drive for DoorDash, Uber Eats, any of these gig apps, that is your business. I mean like an actual business. You're running the numbers, you should be managing those numbers apart from just going online and taking requests. That's why in this video, I wanna go over four business factors that are commonly ignored. Welcome to the channel, my name is Mike. This channel is dedicated to your success in this gig economy, the side hustle. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. One of the biggest ones with really one of your biggest assets, that's a vehicle depreciation. I get questions like, should I use my 2018 vehicle, 2019, or my brand new 2020 or 2021 vehicle in the gig economy? And you absolutely can, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if it's an electric vehicle for efficiency. But don't ignore and don't forget about vehicle depreciation because let's take an example here. If the average driver is driving 10,000 to 12,000 or 15,000 miles a year on their vehicle, if you're driving for personal miles and then you add on business miles, you could be driving 20, 25, 30,000 miles a year. I would break it down by the day. I would track my miles every single day. I would add them up every single week based on the hours that I'm driving and just do some quick math. Say, okay, well, if I'm gonna drive for the next four months, six months or a year, how many miles am I really gonna be putting on that brand new vehicle? And at number two, speaking of miles, it's not tracking your miles for tax purposes. You're allocated tax write-offs, deductions for those business miles that you're incurring with your vehicle. Here in 2020 driving, the IRS here in the United States gives you 57 and one half cents as a deduction for every single business mile. Now this is not professional or legal tax advice as I am not a CPA or tax professional, but when you're logging your miles every single day, you should use some kind of mileage tracking app like Stride or MileIQ or SherpaShare, or you should keep a manual log. Simply zero out your trip odometer whenever you're going online and then record those miles when you go offline. You're gonna take those recorded miles come tax time and you'll multiply them by that standard IRS business deduction of 57 and one half cents and that is your total tax deduction. Now there is another method for tax deductions that's your itemized tax deductions where you'll actually keep the itemized receipts of each and every operating cost with your vehicle and moreover your business. Again, make sure to talk to your tax professional or CPA to go over those options. And number three, let's just keep it rolling into taxes. That's not setting money aside for those taxes. If you didn't know, and this could be a massive wake up call if you haven't been doing this already, but working in the gig economy, you are a 1099 independent contractor. At least at the time of filming this video, you're brought on all these apps as a 1099, again, an independent contractor. And when it comes to taxes, your taxes are not withheld versus let's say you are a full-time employee with a W-2. So if you've been driving and just spending that money month after month, quarter after quarter, and setting aside 0% for taxes, now ideally you should aim for 20 to 30% of your gross revenue saved for taxes. But if you've been setting aside zero, you may be in for a big surprise come tax time. And at number four, remember, this is a business. These are business decisions. And when you're on the road, that's basically your office. So you have to make smart decisions when it comes to earnings and expenses. And your biggest expense when actually on the road are the miles that you're driving. So if miles are your largest expense on the road, don't drive too many of them. Specifically, don't drive too many of them without an order or without a request. Those are what's called empty miles. It's empty miles because you don't have a passenger in the vehicle or you don't have any request on your DoorDash or Uber Eats app. In my opinion, some empty miles is okay. You're not going to avoid all empty miles. So some repositioning, let's say three to five minutes between hotspots on DoorDash or just repositioning to a busier zone on Uber or Uber Eats. That's okay, but if you're just driving around just for the sake of driving around, you're really not paying attention to it, in the hopes of getting a request that way, each and every mile is more cost and shortening your profit margin when you're driving. So when you're out there driving, I want you to make as much money as possible, but you're only gonna do that if you're running this like a business and looking at the margins, looking at not only the profits, how much can I make of course, how much money can I bring in every single hour, especially hopefully with those bonuses, but also the expenses. If you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like. And you can also click or tap the screen here for my most recent video. 
as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.